through music throughout the years, from ancient times up to modern day. But during ancient times, I really honestly could not find much as far as excerpts and pieces go. But it's just basically really, really simple and mostly Greek and Roman pieces. There wasn't much other than that. It was played mostly on like loops and lyres, loops and lyres, like a little mini harp, basically. And then after that comes the medieval times. And then the church, as it did with the people's lives, it also dominated the music. The music of the time was basically just completely about the church, and it was very, very musical. Mainly it was plain songs and Gregorian chant, which is basically just voice, and it's just played some rather. One line, there wasn't much to it, like you could have just been started to grow more and became a little more instrumental and there wasn't much difference between Baroque and Renaissance, just Baroque made, basically just made it more. I'll get to that more later, but Renaissance was the development of polyphonic music and the bass was first used, like that's kind of argued, some say it's later Renaissance the bass was first used and other times it says Baroque was when it was used, like early Baroque, so it's like that overlap period. This is where I actually have, you know, pieces and stuff like that. For you. But Baroque, it was from 1600 to 1750. And things that it's most famous for, the key points of it, was the basso continual, which is figured bass. And for those of you who don't know what that is, it's basically how you have chords like C chord, G chord. The bass note is the bass, obviously. And then it's just like the Roman numeral, sometimes a number, and it tells you what interval and what um, part of the chord the bass shall play, and then you fill it in from there. It doesn't matter what it is after that. And then there's usually only one mood for the entire piece. If it was going to be happy, it was going to be happy throughout the entire thing. If it was going to be very melancholy and minor, it was going to be like that throughout the entire piece. The orchestras also started developing around that point. It was very strong or very small, mostly just stringed instruments. And yes, they had all the string instruments we have today, viola, violin, cello, bass. Um, they also had some small woodwinds, like wooden flutes and bassoon, oboe, and natural trumpets and horns came about. They didn't have the valves that we have nowadays. It just basically, they could play fifth. They could play C, G, C, they could play D, A, B, all it was and they were just used for color. And Baroque is extremely famous for having very long melodies, very long phrases, and extremely technical and ornamental. Like, really just crazy. And the keyboard instruments were mostly organs and harpsichords. Um, unfortunately, I don't have that, so it's not quite as accurate as a representation. All I have is piano. We do have a heart support, but... <laughs> I can carry it out here. It's pretty light. If, the, if, a, if you're interested, if you'd rather not, that's fine. Yeah. I might at the end. I might want to try sure. it out, but just... Well, like just to show them, not... Yeah. Just yeah. Show okay. But um, I don't know how to Very play proud that. Very <laughs> And then vocal music also dominated the time here, but I'm not a singer, so these guys... Yeah. <laughs> and then I'll play a couple of different pieces. This one is Many Went in D minor by... Your heart's fashion back. <laughs>
there's uh, two main themes usually. The first one is in tonic, the key that it's written in, and then a different key, usually the dominant, which is the fifth of the scale. So if it's the piece is in C, the dominant would be G. And it kind of switches keys, modulation. But in the fourth movement, this is reversed, or the last movement rather, it's just reversed. The first movement becomes in the dominant key, and then the second part is in key of C or key of B or both of the pieces, and it makes it end better. And then concerto is basically a solo instrument and the orchestra accompanying. And during this time, the orchestra had a lot more parts in it and a lot more of the themes developed in it. And the solo instrument came in and bits and pieces here, here and there and stuff. And then during this time, there are a lot less ornaments. The mordants you don't see very much. They still have trills, but again, not as much of it and stuff like that. And it's a little more homophonic than neurophonic, like how it's sort of like two different melodies going at once. Now you just hear a single melody with an accompaniment. And this will be the next piece I'll play is a Haydn concerto in D. And I'm not playing the entire thing; it's really long, so I'll take a little bit of the last movement, the very beginning, and a little bit at the end, and put it together because it fits together.
classical, a lot of times, especially for piano, and that's my focus as a pianist. So, um, the pedal wasn't used very much. It was used very, very sparsely if it was ever used. And then romantic, which was from about 1820 to 1910, it was just a lot more freedom for musicians. They used a lot more piano. Some people say it's a lot more expressive. And I think that's because the tempo was freer. There was good use of a lot more different keys. And also at the time, the orchestra, how it's very, very small, it grew tremendously. And that's because at this time, there's a um, no invention in the brass. They actually got valves like modern instruments today do. And so that let them play all the different intervals and stuff like that. And it was used not just to add color and like various little parts here and there in the music. It was actually, they had main parts. And very, it started telling stories and stuff like that, which I think also helped to the expression at the time. And like there was program music, which was literally music telling stories. They would sometimes, they would have programs with it and say, oh, well, this was based on Shakespeare's A Midsummer's Night Dream. And they would have pieces and you could think in your head, oh, I recognize this. This is what's in the play they were doing, that, 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 that. And it kind of goes along with the story. And then there's also just tons more styles in music. They still had a lot of um, classical basis because, well, you can't completely just start out of nowhere. You have to have something to develop on. And nationalism also grew during this time. And this was because there were several countries that just dominated the period as far as composition did went. And so various people and composers from other places were like, hey, these people have fame. We don't have to be from Germany to have such fame. Or Italy or England or France, the major countries at the time. But what about us up here in Norway? We can compose, we can play songs, and you know, stuff like that. So nationalism also grew at the time. And a lot of more chords progressions and different types of chords grew. And discords, chromatics, and chromatic is basically just every key on the piano. It goes up. <laughs>
with different moods with any piece, how it started really heavy and minor, and then it developed into this more major piece, and then it went back to the very minor and developed even more on that, and grew into this really big, huge chord piece set. And then it went back down into the quiet little tacky major chord. And that wasn't seen during the Baroque times. It started to develop a little bit during the classical period, not much. It was more of like different movements would have different moods, or moods rather. But it mostly developed into the romantic period. That's and another piece, a major piece I'm going to do, is by Robert Schumann. And it's called Traumerei. It's German for daydream, reverie, something like that. freedom 
and new ideas and stuff inspired a lot of different movements. And during around 1910 to 1920, I believe it was, there was the French Impressionistic movement. And that was composers like Eric Satie, Claude Debussy, stuff, people like that. And they had a lot more, like, a lot really flowing movements and really long and very pretty. And I'll play a piece. It's called Reverie. And it's, that's page over. And it's pretty cool because the piece I just played, the Schumann piece, and this piece are both about the same thing. So it's a really good impression of, like, how everything changes during the time.
sort of developing. It actually developed in America, but it also spread over to Europe a lot, which is why I included it, was jazz. And jazz, blues, that whole ordeal. And also we see more instruments and more choral things like that in the jazz area. And saxophone sort of being used. I don't know if Donald's still here. He's a saxophone player. He's pretty much everywhere. He walked in and out. I guess he went, but anyways. So I was going to play a song from when I was younger. And it's one of my favorite blues type of boogies types of songs. And it's called Beach Buggy Boogie. Thank you. 